Hello everybody. I'm on Gossamer with her nice golden and red bridle. Just doing some uh, training on her. But I also been doing some thinking about spear or lance use from horseback. This is, uh, it's got a flag on the end. I'll tell you why uh, shortly. It's actually uh, so that you can see what I'm doing. But basically this is a rough approximation, but it's safe of the spears they had uh, in the Bayer Tapestry. It's about the same thickness, so it's actually quite thin. It's about an inch thick, actually, about as thick as my thumb. Um, and probably the Bayer Tapestry ones were a little longer than this, but nonetheless, it's a useful approximation. Now, there's been some discussion online about lance use uh, from horseback, spear and lance use. I think there's a difference between the two weapons. They are both basically long bits of wood with a point at the end, uh, but one is much heavier than the other, and this is a spear used from horseback, used by people that probably had just transitioned from uh, fighting on foot with spears and swords and axes and stuff to riding on horseback and impact charges. So their techniques were all learned about stabbing. So a lot of the techniques we see are to do with this, stabbing downwards and I'll show you that in a second. That's why I've got the uh, red flag on the end so that you can see where the point is. You stab like this, obviously like this, and you can also hold it this way and you can stab horizontally. Now, we see a little bit of couching along the forearm, but I don't think this is couching. I think this is just another way of actually stabbing. Couching, which is a much later technique, is holding one end of the spear under your arm. What that does, I'll show you in a minute. So let's just have a look at some of the stabbing techniques against a target at a certain speed, because I'm lucky enough to be able to do this from horseback and show you what it would have been like and the effectiveness of it. So that was the horizontal stab at speed. You'll see that it's about speed of horse and speed of impact of the lance, but the lance isn't actually couched against me at all. Still very effective, you can pull the spear out of course, um, but interesting uh, in that effectively it's a foot technique, if you like, one-handed spear stab. Let's try another technique. Uh, we were talking about underarm, horizontal, maybe against foot, but also against other riders potentially. Let's try this way, because this is also a way of using the spear in the shield wall. You've got your shield here, you've got a stab over the top. So this was used in antiquity, so spears over shields enables you to stab at the faces of the enemy. This is also used from horseback, um, and let's try it. It feels like it'll have less range, because it's, it's a little bit awkward, but um, I think you'll have to get closer and stab downwards, so it may be a useful technique. So let's try that. Good girl, well done. That was, uh, was interesting. The, it was a little less accurate actually, I felt having to stab downwards. Uh, and I think we'll see that in the slow motion. I think um, I found it was a little less accurate, but also you've got less margin for error. You've got to sort of stab downwards, uh, which might be quite useful because you've got height and you can go over the top of shields potentially. So, you know, maybe that's useful in certain circumstances. We see both, so it's quite likely they were both used on the battlefield. Um, what it isn't though, is fully couched because uh, the, impact of a lance held outwards like that is just basically the weight and the force, speed, mass times velocity. When you connect the lance, or the spear, under the arm like this, you're linking the weapon to your body and to the horse. What also is noticeable that you can't actually stab uh, so easily. You do see people jousting in modern jousts, you, do, you see, see people doing, doing that. It's sort of bad technique. To actually couch the lance, you need to hold it firmly under your arm, guiding it with this hand, 
But that completely removes the ability you have of actually reaching out and stabbing, because as soon as you do that, you uncouch the lance. So I think lances became heavier and longer as a need, as a result of the need for basically keeping the lance still when the impact happens. Um, and you have to wait longer as well. So maybe riding techniques improved, the impact of the lance increases, I think, when you are couched like this. And various techniques come in with lance rests and obviously sporting jousts with a lance this side as well as this side. This side is actually much safer because it's a much more gentle angle on the enemy. This one is pretty much straight down the, uh, the lance shaft itself, so a lot more impact is gonna go into and through the point. But let's try that, let's see what it does. The biggest issue for me is the fact that you have to wait for the impact. When you are riding along holding it like this, you can stab, you can stab repeatedly, arguably, as you trot past somebody, you can stab like this. With the couched lance of later periods, it starts to come in around the 11th century. The couched lance, you just have to wait, and it's a single shot, if you like. You can't really, you can't really couch multiple times. You're gonna ride past the target, hit it, the lance is gonna impact, shatter, or break, or miss, and you're gonna ride on or ride past, turn around, come back, get another lance. So they're very different techniques. I think of this one. Well, before we go on to that, let me just show you the couch lance and what it does. I think, um, I think that kind of shows you the difference in the impact. I didn't get even vaguely close to knocking the target over by stabbing it. Mind you, I wasn't trying, but it, wasn't even, it didn't even happen. I couched and locked the lance, same weapon, same spear, under my arm, hit it, and the thing knocked over. I think that sort of demonstrates, in a slightly unscientific way, but nonetheless an interesting way, that the couch lance has a bigger impact than the stabbed spear. Both of them look like lances from horseback, but I think the earlier ones are effectively spear from horseback, used in a similar way to foot, and the innovation was to use a static weapon that was locked to you, an impact with the lance itself being static, longer and heavier perhaps, but also traveling at the same speed as a horse only. There's no stabbing with a big heavy lance, it's locked to you. And I think that's really interesting. I think that's the big innovation. I may be wrong, but it seems to me that what we see is an innovation from techniques that were used on foot by mounted soldiers to techniques that are specifically used on horseback. Absolutely fascinating, the difference that made. And, uh, it wasn't actually very hard to knock that target over, so I'm quite pleased. Come on, good game. 